Hello, welcome back to BioClass Bites. In this video, we're going to talk about temperate forest and tropical rainforest. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. In the previous videos, we have talked about the other terrestrial biomes such as desert, tundra, taiga, grassland, and savanna. In this video, we will talk about the last two types of terrestrial biomes which happen to be forests, specifically the temperate forest and the tropical rainforest. The temperate forest is a biome characterized by having deciduous trees. When we say deciduous, these are trees that shed their leaves during autumn. That's because temperate forests are located in areas uh, that experience uh, four seasons. So in those regions, the winter is cold and the summer is hot, while the spring and autumn seasons are relatively mild uh, in terms of temperature. So again, deciduous trees, these are the trees that shed their leaves during autumn. Uh, many kinds of plants and animals live in this kind of forest because compared to tundra and taiga, the cold period is relatively short and compared to deserts, uh, there is more precipitation. We have this map again to show us the major biomes of the world. So the temperate deciduous forests are found in this part um, of America, um, major parts of Europe and this part of China, and we have here also Japan. So these are um, more images of temperate deciduous forest. So as you can see here, you have um, large amounts of precipitation, and this is one of the major characteristic of temperate forest that enables the growth of very tall coniferous trees such as this one because they can get ample water from the soil. Uh, this one is from the Olympic National Park in Washington. Then we have here another um, uh, bird's eye view image of temperate deciduous forest. As you can see, some of the leaves are turning brown um, and they are about to, to be shed um, come um, autumn or fall season. Uh, so the broad leaves that dominate uh, this type of forest shed their leaves again no, before winter and this one is found in the Durance River in France. So this one is another temperate forest from Tibet. Now this one, uh, di this diagram shows us uh, the different types of uh, trees or categories of trees that can grow in temperate forest. Okay, so as you can see, uh, in, in this type of biome, trees can grow uh, very, very tall and they are the ones that provide this foliage or coverage of these leaves um, among uh, on top of the forest. And then you have smaller shrubs and smaller herb uh, foliage that are found at more, mostly at the bottom of the forest. Okay, so here, these are the, those trees that you can find, okay, these are, those are those trees that you can find, and then you have smaller shrubs and herbs, uh, mostly at the bottom. To learn more about temperate deciduous forest, I recommend that you watch this video from World Biomes. I'll provide the link in the description below. So this one is from um, Aska Biologist from Arizona State University. So again, temperate forest is a type of forest that undergoes four distinct seasons. Many of, this, of their trees shed their leaves during fall and they become inactive during cold winter. Um, in this type of forest, you can find deer, woodpeckers, and other bears, and some of the organisms hibernate through the winter. I'll provide the link to Ask a Biologist in the description below. So since the trees shed their leaves during um, fall or during autumn, um, it's important for microbes to break down these leaves so that the nutrients can be recycled. Okay? So the leaves of these broadleaf trees decay very rapidly um, uh, and then some can dis totally disappear within a year or two and this affects the fertility of the soil. Uh, the, the dissolved nutrients or the or the broke, broken down nutrients will be um, will seep into the soil and can be used by other um, other organisms by becoming available to plants. Um, some materials like wood um, also make it harder to be digested. So these are more examples of trees that can grow in temperate forest: maple tree, oak tree, and shagbark hickory tree. So one phenomenon that is common to forest is called succession or ecological succession. So this could take place over hundreds of years wherein three species in a forest change as one species rep replaces another. So uh, we have here an example of a forest that has already reached its cl stable climax uh, 
state. Uh, however, due to uh, a disturbance, possibly by a natural occur naturally occurring forest fire or a human-induced forest fire or a possible reaction to climate change, we can see that um, it could affect the entire um, ecosystem. So let's look at the panel. So for number one, so number one, you have here an established forest. It has already reached a climax stage. Uh, fire, um, a, pos a possible disturb disturbance to the forest burns the forest down. And for number three and four, eventually an empty land is left behind. Um, however, it will not remain empty for long. Uh, smaller uh, plants or grasses or herbaceous plants could replace that um that they can lot or area okay a new species starts to arrive first would be grasses and then other fast growing plants eventually the area will become home to small bushes and trees and um larger trees will eventually larger deciduous trees will eventually replace those until again no, it reaches its own stable uh, and stable climax stage or state similar to number one okay so this the, the forest has already recovered. Now, this process could, takes, could take hundreds of years, okay? That is why um, for human-induced uh, forest fires, we should really avoid that because we are killing off plants that can actually help us remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Um, and by killing them, we are actually increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And that process uh, to replace them could take hundreds of years. So it's best to uh, just avoid deforestation. So this process is called, again, ecological succession. So we have here more flora of the temperate forest. So we see here a pink cylindrical snow plant, uh, which stills nutrients from the mycorrhizae on tree roots. Uh, and mycorrhizae is actually a relationship between a fungi and uh, roots of a seed plants that allows them to survive um, with each other. So we can see here trees of a defining feature of a temperate forest, of course. Green chlorophyll is broken down. Uh, we can see other leaf pigments such as yellow here. And eventually it will be shed during um, fall or autumn. Uh, mushrooms can also grow on trees. And then one of the tallest trees, uh, the largest known singular tree in the world, General Sherman tree, is actually uh, found in a temperate forest. And small flowering plants can also be found here. In terms of fauna, you can find again deer, you can find chimpanzees, beavers, eagles, okay, and uh, different types of birds in temperate forests. Um, woodpeckers, um, raccoons. Uh, nutcracker, possum, and then bears are also found here. To sum up, temperate forests are found uh, in northern hemisphere mostly, in America, um, Europe, and then parts of Asia, right? and even in some parts of Australia. Precipitation can range um, about 70 to 200 centimeters annually, so that's quite high. Uh, significant amounts of precipitation fall uh, mostly during, se during all seasons, including summer rain and in some forest winter snow. Temperatures uh, are quite extreme with 0 degrees Celsius during winter and summers with very hot and humid temperature and can reach up to 35 degrees Celsius. So mostly you can find a closed canopy okay, of, of, of these tall um, coniferous trees. Okay, so that's what I showed you a while ago. So the tall trees co provide um, coverage or canopy or foliage uh, in, uh, to the rest of the forest floor. Okay? So you have this layer of very tall trees and then you have their mid layer and then very short trees at the bottom. Okay? Um, so again, the deciduous trees shed their leaves during autumn. Uh, so the type of mammals can, that can survive here um, are mostly the ones capable of hibernating during winter. And bird species that can stay here actually migrate to warmer areas during winter. Um, human impact, uh, they are heavily settled in all continents. 
Uh, however, logging and land clearing for agriculture and urban development has cleared a lot of these forested areas. However, due to their ability to recover through ecological successions, these forests are returning to their former um, status and former range. The last type of terrestrial biome is the tropical rainforest. So this biome has much rainfall. Okay, that's why it's called a rainforest all throughout the year. And it is observed to have having high temperature because it is located near the equator. Okay, that's why it's called tropical along the tropic region of the, of the globe. Tropical rainforests have no seasons, but it is important to note that more organisms live here than in all the other biomes combined. Again, even if you combine all the species found in all the previously discussed terrestrial biomes, there are more organisms found in the tropical rainforest. So they have very high biodiversity of organisms. However, we have to note that the soil here is thin and not uh, very fertile because the nutrients are recycled very quickly. This map shows us the distribution of biomes and we can find uh, the tropical rainforest here in uh, this continent, okay, Southern America, in Africa, okay, some parts of Central Asia, here in Southeast Asia. So you can see here even the Philippines, no? our major biome are tropical rainforests, then in some parts of Australia as well. Okay? So it, it, it's actually found along the, near the equator or the tropics, tropical region of the globe. So from Ask a Biologist, Arizona State University, so they describe the tropical rainforest as uh, warm all throughout the year. There are too many animals to count and the huge number of trees keep their leaves all year round. Okay? They do not shed uh, during autumn because there are no autumn or there are no fall season in the tropical rainforest. Many of these trees get so much rain that there isn't even much of a dry season. Again, that's why it's called a rainforest. Okay? More like a rainy season and a rainier season. I'll provide the link to uh, Ask a Biologist in the description below. So this one shows us the um, vegetation, common vegetation found in a tropical rainforest. So you have here uh, the ground layer, okay? So this is the forest floor, okay? Then you can find here the shrub layer for uh, small plants, understory, okay, uh, sm uh, smaller trees. Then you have here the taller trees found in the canopy. So they are the ones that cover, okay? They are the ones that cover the forested areas, those tall trees. Canopy, and then you have the emergent layer. You can also find different organisms in each layer. Eagles, harpy eagles are found in the emergent layer. Um, birds such as this toucan is found in the canopy layer. Uh, you have your opossum found here. Brazilian tapir are found in the ground layer and um, other birds as well. So they have such uh, varieties and such different levels of um, vegetation and that also allows different organisms different animals to survive as well so these are more videos uh, more photos of rainforest so this is from guiana okay so because you hear very thick canopy and puerto rico okay. to learn more about tropical rainforest i recommend that you watch this video from national geographic rainforests 101 i'll provide the link in the description below so I know, again, no, the tropical the rainforest has sev has several layers which make different habitat types. So we have here um, understory and then that forest floor. Okay. So the canopy is the tree tops. Okay. Um, where you can find a dense layer of branches and leaves. Okay. So we've seen this in this um, illustration. Many of the tall trees in a rainforest shoot straight up, straight up and only have branches and leaves near the very top, okay? So we've seen that, okay? With tons of trees packed like this, the treetops create a blanket of leaves 
hundreds of feet above the forest floor. We call that the canopy and it blocks most of the sunlight shading the layers underneath. So the canopy creates this blanket, blanket of forest uh, coverage, okay, blanket of leaves that covers the rest of the forest, okay, shielding them and um, it shades them, it shades the layers underneath. So these are more images now. So in the rainforest, you can be surrounded by so many trees that you can barely see the sky through the thick canopy. So tree tops form a dense layer of leaves. We call that again canopy. Okay. So we can find here another image of a forest floor. And the forest floor is littered with dead leaves and other plant and animal matter. Now one um, thing that you have to note um, is that uh, mostly in, in canopies, the leaves of the trees try to avoid touching each other. So you can see here this very fine line okay, of trees not touching each other, avoiding each other. We call that crown shyness. Crown shyness. And if you're interested, you can actually read more about it. And there's a lot of information, interesting information as to why trees avoid touching uh, each other's leaves. Uh, so these are animals that can be found in the, in the tropical rainforest. Orangutans, you can find here um, uh, tamarind tree, okay, rosy periwinkle, uh, different um, insects such as ants, birds, um, amphibians such as this dart frog, and uh, sloths are also found in rainforest. Um, palm trees are also found there, lianas or those uh, are plants that actually crawl uh, along these vines, orchids as well, and you can see here an aerial view of the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. And again, no, I want to emphasize that tropical rainforests uh, in South America contain the largest diversity of species on Earth. So tropical rainforests, um, even if you combine the species in all the other biomes, uh, they, there are more species found in tropical rainforest. <clears throat> so more organisms, you can find jaguar, lemur, sloths, and gorillas in tropical rainforests. So to sum up, tropical rainforests are found in the equatorial and sub-equatorial regions. So you have here in South America, Africa, um, Asia, Southeast Asia, and even in Australia. They have are constant and quite um, plenty of annual precipitation from they have the highest precipitation 200 to 400 um, centimeters annually um, some some could have quite dry season only averaging of 100 150 to 200 centimeters annually the temperature is quite uh, hot all year round with no seasonal variation little to no seasonal variation it's between 25 to 20 29 degrees celsius so they have layered layered um layers of trees okay so they have a closed canopy we've discussed that um animals would include animals include uh home to millions of uh, millions and millions of species okay you can find um insects spiders arthropods mammals birds and reptiles they have all adapted to the environment uh, of, uh, of, a, of, an, of a tropical rainforest. In terms of human impacts, humans have had long thriving communities in tropical rainforests, but sadly they are now being cut down and converted to farmland, tropical um, uh, urban areas, and other types of land use. So we have to, um, to stop deforestation and to actually plant more trees so that tropical rainforest could uh, recover and return to their climax status. Um, I have here a link to ask a biologist from Arizona State University. University, They actually have this application, Virtual Biomes, that you can explore. Um, I'll provide the link in the description below. That ends our video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Till next time, goodbye.